I'm, I was its steward. And as a steward, the reality is that none of us will own a company forever. One simple reason, we're all going to die. So at a minimum, we're going to pass the company on to somebody else at some point, whether it's to your heirs, to your employees, or you're going to sell it to somebody, whether you're going to sell it to a financial buyer, or you're going to sell it to a strategic, or you're going to take it public. One of those outcomes is going to happen. The moment you realize that, that you're really no more than a steward, therefore, there's a whole bunch of things that I think people should be doing differently, and that's what I'm going to drill into a little bit later in this, um, in this talk. But that also leads to the whole idea that selling is not a bad outcome because monetization is a really good thing to happen. So after I did Foundation Source, after I did um, Inherent, I left that and I started doing what a friend of mine called a venture catalyst. I just started launching new businesses, putting the teams together, getting the capital raised, and helping them to get off the ground. And I did six companies over a period of about two years. It was a great experience, um, very venture oriented in the 1999 to 2001 time when the dot com world was, was going crazy. All these companies had something to touch the internet, but they were more like tech enabled companies. One was a company up in San Francisco actually called freesamples.com that was just a rocket ship in growth. We basically had a site that people can come shopping to get free stuff. And the issue, what they had to give us back was market research. And so we got paid by companies to place their products into our site and get the market research. That company, unfortunately, it grew really fast. We had to raise money right when the dot-com crash happened and just couldn't raise the money around our investors that we had. And GE Capital basically, in my opinion, stole the company from us. Um, for virtually nothing. We had another company called More Benefits, which was the first company to do online benefits management. So for employees to sign up and manage their health insurance, their 401k and all of that, sold that company to a company called Aon, which is a big insurance uh, company. Had another company which was a pure tech play called Nuvis, which was by far the coolest company uh, that I was involved with that built a um, visual programming environment that you could then des deploy against you know, a couple dozen different languages and databases and it just generated all the code. And again, we were about a month away from filing our IPO for that one when the dot-com crash happened in, in, um, in April of 2000. And we ended up having to sell it to a company called Rational, which then was bought by IBM largely for this uh, technology. And then I had a company called um, You Are Here, which was called the Map Network, which we sold to Nokia. It was a last mile mapping solution, um, you know, before all the various map solutions came out uh, today. And then the final company was a company called Foundation Source. Since I was 10, I did my first fundraiser and was always interested in philanthropy. And you know, throughout my life, I've been active in starting charities and sitting on boards of charities and in giving to charities. And I was sitting on a $2 billion foundation board called the Kauffman Foundation, which is based in Kansas City that's focused on entrepreneurship, and saw what it was like to uh, have a large foundation with significant resources at your disposal. At the same time, when I took our software company public, created a small family foundation. And the, the, the juxtaposition was intense, even though structurally they were exactly the same entity, they just had more zeros and a hundred more staff people. And so the idea of Foundation Source was to bring the capabilities of a Gates Foundation or a Kauffman Foundation to the masses. And so Foundation Source today is the largest company that provides support and services to wealthy families when they create their private foundations to give their wealth away. And we built a web-based technology that enabled all the family members to collaborate and coordinate. We built an outsourcing service to do all the works, so all the accounting, the compliance, you know, writing and today of the 35,000 plus checks that have to go out each year as grants or expenses, and do all the work, and then provide the philanthropic advisory. So everything but managing the money. Um, 
second industry that basically I helped get off the ground. And it was just brutal because we'd go to banks and say, we're going to create a new financial product for you and you're going to basically outsource this to us. And they said, no, sell us the software. We want to do it all in-house. In just sell us the software. And I said, no way. I'm doing the work. You need to give us your best clients. And it took us years. Six or seven times I was within minutes to hours of not making payroll. And it was one of those companies that I just had to will to survive. You know, basically grovel to friends and family to, you know, put more money into the company to keep it alive long enough to actually succeed. Today, you know, it, it touches over $10 billion of, of funds and, you know, touches over $100 billion worth of family wealth and it's hugely successful. But incredible how hard it was uh, to get the business to where it is today. One of the things that I, that I learned, um, you know, during this is that, um, you know, there's a, a great saying that if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And somebody said when I asked about an entrepreneur, you know, about the driven and, and that, that passion, you know, and that really is true. If, you know, it is going to be hard. It's like the one thing I can guarantee you that during your journey as an entrepreneur, you're going to run into a lot of walls at miles per hour that's just going to hurt. And so, you know, a lot of it is do you believe? Because not only do you have to believe to keep yourself going, but all the people that you end up bringing around you, they're looking for you to be the leader. And they're going to key off everything you do. And so if you believe that that hill can be climbed, they will too. If you're questioning it, it's just never going to happen. And so having that belief, and I absolutely believed that we were going to succeed with Foundation Source. And I was going to do anything we had to to be able to get that company to where it went to. During that time, the latter years, once the company was off the ground, I started working with a family to invest in education businesses and then started to get involved with um, some healthcare technology businesses. And then ultimately, a friend of mine recruited me to come into uh, the private equity world, which is what I'm in today. And I've been there a little over two and a half years. And it's just been fascinating to see the, the differences about how all of that, um, that works. So what I want to do now is just give you a couple of the lessons learned that I've had just along the way from the entrepreneurial. And then I'm going to focus in on the, uh, the lessons learned that I've had specifically with the lens of, of private equity.